um, to reach young people and engage them through all of the noise, you need to find a way to connect students with these digital collections. And it needs to look and feel like other experiences they're enjoying online. And that's through clever design. So design also allows us to employ pedagogy to ensure that we're responsive to that learning landscape. We're putting the learner at the heart of our collection to achieve learner-centered design. There are 12 principles of design, um, but we're going to be covering six design elements today. Uh, though I've paired a couple because I think they work hand in hand to ensure good pedagogy and communication. Really, that is what all of these design principles aim to improve, communication with your audience, be that students, teachers, parents, or the wider school community, or maybe your professional network. So let's take a closer look at these. The first paired principles are emphasis and proportion. Uh, emphasis is all about making the right things stand out and proportion is about how the different elements relate. At its simplest, give space to what is most important. Um, and interestingly, that conversation that Madison spoke about with their marketing department, where they talked about putting uh, at the top of the page that the students are landing on all of the things that will connect them to the different aspects of that library program. Um, these are two distinct design principles, but for pedagogy and learner-centered design, they can serve the same purpose. These may be familiar terms, but it's about being intentional in applying them towards your purpose, how they help you to tell the story. So let's have a closer look at this example on the right. Emphasis is achieved through highlighting particular content in the menu, assigning each and identifying icon. Each new subtopic is easily identified by the larger title that matches the menu. Then sections within that subtopic sub sub are signposted with a smaller title, but, are consist but consistent colour choices have been made. The main information is presented consistently in terms of the titles, text and layout. Supplementary resources like the videos in the first column um, and that information about COVID-19 and air pollution in the uh, far right column. Um, these are denoted with a different style of title to show that they are different types of information. Proportion is created through the adjustment of column widths, the positioning of the most important information in the widest column, but also by positioning this in the middle of the page. You can see how these two principles help create each other. The proportion of content allows the emphasis to show naturally. Be intentional about what you're choosing to make stand out. This might be through size differences, as it is in this example, or you can see the choice of color and the inclusion of an identifying icon adds emphasis to those key areas of the design, which actually leads us nicely into the next design principle, hierarchy. Hierarchy is all about getting up, get, setting up your information according to importance. This is particularly crucial for text to ensure the reader is able to engage with the content fully. You might achieve this by ensuring important content has a prominent position, or you could, could employ anchors to ensure important information catches the attention of the learner as they move through the content. So let's have a closer look at our example of this hierarchy. This portal is for year 10 history students to support them in locating primary source documents. See how important subtopics within the portal are included in the navigation menu across the top of the portal and how they each are signposted with clearly defined title and border in order of appearance down the first column. Titles with solid background act as anchors for the eye as it passes down the page. And the inclusion of subtopics in the navigation ensures, ensures students can easily locate the specific content they may need when returning to this page in the future. But also emphasis and proportion are employed in a way that reinforces the hierarchy of information. So repetition is important in design. That's the sense of it, the sense of rhythm it can create is crucial to clear communication. 
Some easy ways to achieve this in your learning design is through consistent use of visual elements. Um, perhaps enjoy, employ the rule of three for colour selection. Uh, when we take a look at some tools for design later in the webinar, there's an excellent tool I've included to support this colour selection. Though we are always trying to engage our students with the flashy elements of our design, we must also provide some consistency and a sense of familiarity that allows them to confidently move through the content for learning. This could be a fine line to balance. Uh, let's see how repetition has been used effectively in two different designs. Uh, our first example portal is designed for year nine history. This is actually the one uh, Madison mentioned earlier. Uh, they're studying the First World War. Let's take a closer look at how banners have been used in this design. Uh, these banners have been created using one of the tools we'll be looking at later in the webinar. <clears throat> I've used a single template and modified the title, image and colour. Because I've chosen to be consistent with the size, font and layout in the banners, I can be a little bit more adventurous with colour choices. So rather than sticking to that rule of three for a single portal, I've decided to keep the banners consistent, but use, utilise more colours for, for interest. Um, I've also been consistent in the size of those banners, um, in the size of the images and the video that has been included, um, and also in the layout of the text. So it's really important uh, for students to be able to navigate through that. This second example aims to support year 10 science students to learn more about their chosen international science project. Here, the structure of information is made consistent for each subtopic. For equity, it's important to ensure students could confidently pick a topic they are interested in without concern for the level of scaffolding available for each. Um, as we move through the page, you can see each topic has consistent presentation, the same elements, um, but it has a unique colour to group those resources together. Um, but the layout remains consistent. So the last pair of principles are movement and unity. So movement's all about how the eye travels over the design. To ensure learning is accessible for our students, we need to be intentional about guiding them through the information presented. This is essential for meaning making. Unity is about creating a consistent presentation within a single design, perhaps across your collection of designs, as so beautifully illustrated in Madison's presentation. Keeping these design principles in mind when curating content is a great way to remind yourself about the best pedagogy for presenting information to your students for learning. So let's take a closer look at this example. This example is uh, this, a collection of resources related to poetry and it's divided into three designated groupings, none of which are more important than the other, so they share equal emphasis in the design. Unity is created through the consistent presentation of the banners, the use of a single colour for each column, and the equal width of the three columns draws the eye down the page rather than across. So that's that sense of movement that they're drawn down through the topic um, by that use of colour in that column. and a variety of content being presented allows them to keep interest and they can see. Um, as for each topic, there's a variety of different types of resources for them. Repetition can be seen in the style of the manners, but also in the language choices. While emphasis and proportion ensure that each topic within the portal is given equal weighting, each set of resources serves a specific purpose as outlined in the banner and it pre is presented as important in its own right. It, uh, sorry, just it may seem like hierarchy and the use of movement are in competition with each other. Uh, perhaps the most important information is located throughout the design instead of at the top. In that case, this is where movement takes over, guiding the learner through the information to ensure they don't miss anything. But not all design principles will suit all content. 
In practice, how these design principles work together can be the key to presenting a curated digital resource collection that not only supports the curriculum goals of your school, but also meets the needs and desires of the learner by creating visual appeal and helping them to make sense of the information before them. You may be using some of these unintentionally without realising or perhaps um, with some intention. But we hope that you feel empowered to make intentional choices around these design principles moving forward. Don't be overwhelmed by following all the rules. Pick one thing and give it a try. If it is a success, keep at it. If it doesn't work for you, pick something new to try. Try it again with a new resource later on. If you have a resource that's just not working for you, perhaps it's not getting the use you hoped it would as you put it together, review it with these principles in mind. Perhaps create a copy of the portal and make some changes to the emphasis or proportion, add some repetition, perhaps change some colours or titles to enhance the repetition. Maybe rearrange the content to ensure the hierarchy of information is clear. You might even share the two versions of your portal with key stakeholders, maybe a teacher or teaching team, maybe a group of students who have wandered into the library at lunch. See what they think is more appealing, what's easier to read or follow. Ask them for advice on what they would change if they could. Um, give them that sense of control in, in giving you that feedback.